<laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nothing's that okay. Yeah, that's perfect. How's it going? Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, I was just yeah. freaking trying to sort out this whole job situation and stuff. Now it's down in Newmarket, is it? Yeah, it's down in Newmarket, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> I'll be watching. I'm excited for you. Well, why don't we have you introduce yourself first and then I'll ask you a few questions. So my name is Kayla Francis, aka the Urban Jockey. Tell me a little bit about how you got into horses and then how you specifically got into racing from that. Yeah, so literally I was, uh, I've always been into like animals since I was young. I always wanted to kind of like be a vet and kind of go down that route and always work with animals. But uh, as I got older, I kind of like veered a bit away from it. Mm -hmm. But eventually I got back into it and I went and did my animal care course in college. And I was literally just sitting through, uh, sitting on Facebook one morning and I seen one of my brother's friends, he was started like a riding school for kids. So I thought, do you know what? I'm not doing anything right now. It'd be good for me to like try and get down and volunteer. At least I'm doing something around animals anyway. And yeah, ended up going down there and literally just never left. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. So that, and that, was that the Urban Equestrian Academy? Yeah. yeah so this was the Urban Equestrian and I literally just, I volunteered for about, say about a month and a half. Mm. And uh, he was just there like, yeah, like you've got some like real good talent on these horses. We can definitely do something with you. Like we can get you to, to go somewhere or do something. And he suggested the racing school. So I was a bit skeptical. I've never heard of the racing school, literally. I've never heard of it. I've never thought about horse racing or even anything like that. Like the whole industry was like oblivious to me. I never even knew that it existed. Yeah. So I thought, do you know what? It's something else. It's something to try, and it will probably get. I'd probably get somewhere from it. So why yeah. not? So you went down to there, and what was that like? Talk us through a course, because there's a lot of people who were like, "How do I get into racing? Like, what does what happened when you got down to Newmarket at the racing school?" It was just like a complete change for me. Like, I've never seen like anything like it. I've never seen gallops before. I've never seen like how the accommodation was in the yard. I've never even been onto a racing yard or anything like that, or even in those kind of conditions. So it was just a bit like nerve-wracking for me I settled down for the first kind of couple hours and then I think everything just like kind of just hit me like everything just plummeted on me I just I had like homesickness for a good like two weeks I'd say Aww. well I'm glad I'm 100% I'm glad that I stuck it out because it was such a, it was such an amazing time and I met so many good people yeah. and I've gained so much experience from it so it was it was literally such a good time yeah. and it was literally just like racing yard conditions anyway so we would like wake up in the morning go muck out two three horses come back up for breakfast ride and then go back down for lunch and then come back down for our lectures so it was pretty just like a school kind of based course and I guess what was it like because obviously you've been riding for not that long when you decided to go off to racing school so what was it like sort of learning the basics of riding whilst also learning how to like gallop these really fit racehorses that must have been a bit I, I feel like I would have been a bit scared <laughs> do you know what I think because I didn't really think too much of it I think yeah. it just like all kind of happened yeah. and I, I weren't really in a discipline anyway or anything like that so I, I think it was a bit easier for me because it's just like straight into racing so you graduated from that in September right yeah in September yeah and then since then you've been on a couple of yards just working and doing a bit of racing I guess Corona's right it made it quite difficult as well right yeah so uh, I went to uh, a couple of yards beforehand and I just uh, I just didn't really get on mm. and I didn't really find that I'd have much opportunity there and because I think I, I feel like I, as I'm quite old in the industry because usually the start out about 16 I thought You're 20 I need now, to right? kind of yeah I'm 20 I'm 21 this year so I've, I thought to myself, I need to kind of like fast forward this and yeah. try and make something happen a bit quicker than usual. But you're off to Newmarket soon for your new yard. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully I can take my license out through this yard and get a couple of races and stuff and get going. Just really to kickstart this career now, man. Yeah, well, it's the perfect place to be. I mean, I just, I spoke to Rosie a couple of weeks ago and she, it sounds like Newmarket is the perfect place to be. You've got so many yards, you've got all the different gallops. There's so many people down there trying to do the same thing. So hopefully it will feel like a really like inspiring place. Definitely. I've never seen a place like such orientated, orientated around horses. Yeah. It was like definitely a big, like big, big change and I, I love it. I can't get enough of it now. Yeah, it'll be nice because you were saying as well, you're not from like a really horsey family, right? So it's quite different to be surrounded by people who are all doing the same thing. No one in my family, literally not one person in my family has ever owned a horse or even thought about, yeah, like going to work with a horse or anything like that. I probably rode a horse on that holiday and stuff. <laughs> Nothing more than that. And you've talked openly on your channel about being in a sport that is like, I think you said 98% white. predominated so uh, me thinking about that little two percent I was thinking oh, wow it's like it's crazy not to have that kind of ethnic group or any other ethnicities into the horse races I've, I've kind of like tried to like look and see 
how much diversity is around the sport and stuff. I don't think it's that as much as like, it's kind of like segregated or anything like that. I think it's just people haven't got the chance to even think about that into a career unless you're like brought into it, like brought up in a certain background and things like that. Yeah, so like with funny. me, it was all by chance, like it was literally all by chance. I was lucky enough to even get to go to the racing school and even do what I'm doing right now. I'd never thought about horses until that moment. Yeah. So I don't think that many people would be thinking, okay, yeah, let me just go jump on a horse or anything yeah, like that. I don't true. think it kind of crosses their mind like that. So Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of people as well and a lot of people that watch my channel and think that in order to get into horses, you have to grow up with a lot of money because obviously they're really expensive animals. So a lot of people, like you said, don't even get the chance to try and ride a horse because they can't afford it. Um, all right, I've got a few questions for you from uh, Instagram. So let me get these out. Yeah, I've been waiting to hear these. I want to see what, what people want to ask. Oh, this is such a good question. And actually one that I am actually <laughs> genuinely interested in from my personal self. Um, is it difficult to restrict yourself from food for your weight for being a jockey? Or is it not something you've had to worry about too much yet? Generally, I sit around, I'd say about 10 and a half stone, 11 stone. Okay. Which is not very great for the flats, but I wanted to go into the jumps anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of like an ideal weight. What most like most people probably struggle with is like when they're on the flats and they're kind of like a bit bigger or a bit taller. Mm. I kind of it's, it's like they'll probably think, oh yeah, like I can't eat this or I have to eat certain times and like cut down meals and stuff and things like that. But I don't really I don't really see the point in it like, as much yeah. because I'd rather have my my body to be healthy and me to like work at my top like the best that I can yeah. than starve myself and like make pre like put pressure on myself and things like that just to just to be racing and so you can be a bit you can be heavier when you're doing hurdles or uh jumps than you can when you're doing flat racing yeah oh okay cool i didn't know that and what do you do to keep fit for racing because i think a lot of people think it's really easy or just sit on a, stood on a horse but if you've ever tried to push a race horse or tried to do a gallop yeah. for more than like a minute it is really hard work so what do you do to keep fit for that uh, in the racing school we had fitness like three days a week oh wow so we'll so literally it'll be like routine to have fitness and since I've come back I've literally just been doing my jogs every day trying to yeah, keep my actual stamina up and yeah. I've just like been doing like uh like the ball squat hold because it's more like endurance rather than strength it sounds like it's a lot of stamina cardio and then just having like core strength and balance that that seems like is that accurate yeah yeah it's like it's just like most of it like if you've got the technique and you know how you ride and stuff and you know like certain horses and things you would have that technique already so I wouldn't say you need that much strength it's just more of like the endurance in your body and the stamina these are actually good questions but they're really bizarre um if you could feed carrots to any horse a Live or dead, who would it be? <laughs> It'll probably have to be Frankel because this has got to have been one of the best oh. racehorses about. <laughs> Is there one horse who's changed your life? One horse who's changed my definitely yeah. um, from the racing school was a horse called Astro Wolf. And at the start, like when we was midway through the course, he was one of the more difficult horses to ride. So I, I got on him and he dropped me about I can't say a good four times, I'd say. Like buck, <laughs> like buck you off or yeah, he's booked me off dipped in like threw me off and things like that so <laughs> he got to a point where one time I literally got up and I was like I can't do it no more like, I literally I was just I just had enough and then, um, one of my teachers called Mr Souza if she didn't tell me like if she didn't give me that serious look and turn around to me and say get back on the horse I don't think I would have had the confidence to ride him anymore oh that's so that's so nice to hear though because I think everyone would think about racing school and think that they give you like really good horses that are like really well behaved to make you learn yeah. how to do the racing but actually you have to ride whatever you're given I guess and hope yeah literally and half the horses are quite difficult like for people that have not been in racing long and things like that like especially for me when I got in like onto that horse I was thinking oh my god I'm gonna freaking die <laughs> but, <laughs> literally but I think that horse he definitely gave my confidence and made my riding so much better I ended up graduating on him <laughs> oh that's so sweet and do you know what it's always it's always the most difficult horses when you look back that are the ones that you're like god if I hadn't ridden them I wouldn't be able to do xyz describe your dream horse my dream horse yeah that's a hard one wow that is a, that really is a hard one do you know what I think what it is I think once you've actually got a horse and you've been around that horse for a certain amount of time you've put so much work into it yeah. that'll be your dream horse anyway because yeah. you just fall in love with it you that is such a good answer. Okay, what's what's like been one of the hardest moments at since you've been riding? I guess at the racing school you talked about being really homesick. So like, what's been your hardest moment? That maybe the moment where you were like, I don't know if this is for me. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say the actual full transition from moving from the racing school to actually being on a yard. It's not the same kind of vibe. Like at the racing school, you've got like friends and you know that you've got your course and there's loads of people and loads of kids and they're all young and stuff and like everyone just gets on and then once you move to a yard it's like really serious and people are like because it's work that everyone's really serious and just wants to get their job done just go home and things like that so I think it was just a bit 
like of a nerve wracking kind of change and it was a bit of experience kind of like seeing how the actual jobs work compared to the racing school what's been the proudest moment so far for you the pr- i'd say the, uh, the proudest moment has to be like seeing my mum so excited to watch me go down the gallops and actually see me riding oh that is so sweet no i love that i think that's so nice and i bet for her as well watching you like progress with this new hobby and then seeing you actually graduate and look like quote unquote like a proper jockey and like going down the gallops must have been quite an amazing experience for her for sure what's next for you you said you're moving down to new market soon you've got a job lined up what are you hoping to do this year hopefully by the end of this year i want to try to take out my amateur license and at least have had like one ride when they do start back i'll hope to uh, get a a ride and i guess with your with your amateur license you you'd have to do a riding assessment and a fitness assessment is that right yeah uh, you do i think i'm sure yeah you do i think it's a week course and you do like uh riding throughout the day and then do your fitness and then it all builds up to like one big test how exciting and then maybe one day we'll see you at the grand national here's hoping 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 yeah <laughs> Um, all right well I won't take up any more of your time people can follow you at the urban jockey on instagram that's right and I'll put the handles so people can find it and hopefully see you in your journey towards your amateur license and beyond in the next few years yeah hopefully hopefully if it goes well (laughs) I'll make it somewhere (laughs) you got it we all believe in you you've got the whole riding with me community behind you now you can't fail like it's gotta happen (laughs) all right thank you so much for your time I appreciate it no um, worries anytime all right see you later Bye. Bye.